Okay, we spent quite a bit of time talking about physical change. Now we're going to talk about chemical change. So in a chemical change, we have a process in which the identity of pure substance is altered as a result of the rearrangement of the atoms. So we can once again think about this reaction of taking some hydrogen and some oxygen and letting them react to form water. So we are breaking bonds between hydrogen atoms. We're breaking bonds between oxygen atoms. This actually looks with the oxygen in the middle and the hydrogens on either side. So I know I'm breaking those hydrogen bonds to do that. And so you're rearranging the atoms to form something new. We know that the property of this is completely different than the property of the elements that make them up. And that is a very common process, a common uh, chemical reaction you see that What's formed is completely different than what made up the beginning pieces. Here is a, an example of a chemical change in which a candle is being burned. Candle is a very long chain, what we call hydrocarbon. It's only made up of carbons and hydrogen. So if you look at the key there, we see that there we've got a chain of black running together and we have, those are the carbons and then each Carbon has two hydrogens at least on them. The end ones have a little extra ones on the end. But that is our molecule of wax. Now in comes some oxygen. So my reactants are, the things that are coming together are the wax and the oxygen. When the candle burns, what we form is carbon dioxide and water. So that's what's being represented in those images right there. So we know that what it started with is very, very different than the stuff we finished with. You know what water is. It's going to be water vapor, so it's going to be in the gas state. And the carbon dioxide is a gas as well. Now this is if it burns completely. We know that a lot of candles give off soot and um, you might have some carbon monoxide, but that's the ideal products of this reaction. Okay? It can melt. That would just be a physical change. So you could melt wax and maybe some wax might drip down on this candle. It's just melting from the heat. That is just physical because it can re-solidify and still be wax. But if it undergoes what we see depicted here, then that's the chemical change. Okay? The chemical change and chemical reaction are synonymous mean exactly the same thing. So a chemical change and a chemical reaction are both being depicted on this screen. The term reactant is applying in this case to the oxygen and the wax. That's the substance that you have prior to the change. The products are what happens after the chemical reaction. So these are, are my products, the carbon dioxide and the water. So when you see a chemical reaction, and um, I talk about a chemical change, there's always these two components. Reactants, which you started with, the products, what forms after the change has occurred. Now, in a chemical change, what I drew up on the screen here um, was not what we call balanced. It doesn't work very well, but what we're going to see here is that we have got to have the same number of atoms on both sides. This is called the law of conservation of mass. The total mass that you're starting with has got to always equal what you finish with. So I had drawn on the screen earlier this reaction that we're seeing here, but I did not have it having the law of conservation of mass because I didn't put the twos in. But with the twos, when I see that two in front, that means I have two of this whole thing. So there's one of them, there's two of them, okay? If you don't see a number in front, then that assumes a one. So I have one of the O2. Now that gives me a total number of hydrogen atoms that I will draw out. I have one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms here four H's, and here I have one, two, I have two oxygens. Now when the reaction takes place, I still have to have those. So I see, once again, that I have, let's see if I can swipe that in the right direction, there we go. I have one, two oxygens, and I have one, two, three, four hydrogens. So that is what we mean when we are obeying the law of conservation of mass. You have to have the same number of atoms of reactants as the same number of products, atoms of products. Now we don't have the same number of molecules, do we? How many molecules do I have on the left hand side? Okay, I have 
two molecules of hydrogen, I have one molecule of oxygen, I have three molecules. And on the, the right hand side, I only have two molecules. So it's not the molecules that have to be the same, it is the atoms. The atoms have to be the same. When a chemical reaction takes place, no atoms are created, no atoms are destroyed. So you've got to learn how to write, and we will work on this later, we have to be able to write a reaction where we know that the law of conservation of mass is being obeyed. The other thing that I want you to be able to do is to be able to know if a chemical reaction takes place by looking at the reaction and watching it happen. So you've set it up, you, you are experiencing this reaction, you're going to know it's a reaction because you're going to see various signs of this reaction. Now they're listed here, forms of precipitate. What that means is a solid comes out of solution. So it's a liquidy solution and suddenly a solid comes out. That is precipitation, not like precipitation um, rain, okay, but it's the same kind of concept. It's falling out of the sky. This is falling out of solution. Um, it could give off or absorb heat, so it could get really hot or it could feel cold to the touch because it's absorbing heat from the surroundings. It could change color. Maybe it had no color, you dump these things together and suddenly it was bright pink. That would be an indication. It could bubble. So you put two things together that had no bubbles, as soon as they hit each other, it bubbled. That would be an indication. Or it could glow. Not necessarily glow because it's on fire, like giving off heat where it's you know bright like that, but just glowing like a glow stick is that you get in a fair, where you take it and you pop it and you shake it and suddenly you see light coming out. That's called chemiluminescence. Now you're going to, after this video, watch a second video, and in that video I am demonstrating each one of these. You make sure you take note of what you're witnessing, what is um, taking place in those that lead to the evidences that we see here.